Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise, I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a review of a new Henry Margu style. This is Riley in the color 8 slash 27 slash 26 GR. I have never ever seen this color before. It is so pretty. Riley is a brand new release. I'm so excited to tell you all about her. I am doing this review in partnership with Wig Studio One. They did send me this piece so I could show her to all of you guys and try her out. If you want to know more about Riley, then stick around. I am so thankful to Wig Studio One for allowing me to guest review for them again and bring you this brand new style. I'm so excited about this style. If you guys know anything about me, you know I love curly and wavy hair. It is just my absolute favorite and Henry Margu has done a super job of styling this one in exactly the style that I love. Before we look at this style though, let's talk a little bit about Wig Studio One. If you're not familiar with them, they are an online retailer. They're actually the very first place I ever purchased a wig from for over four years ago. So I just love everyone at Wig Studio One and they have such a great support system for us wig wearers. They have a Facebook group that has over 10,000, maybe even almost 20,000 members now. And so if you're struggling with the wig journey, I really recommend you consider joining the Wig Studio One Facebook group because there's so many women eager to help with advice, with tips and tricks, to show pictures. If you're looking at a wig and you'd like to see what it looks like on multiple women, you're bound to find multiple women who own that wig that are willing to share pictures. So please check them out or go to their website at wigstudioone.com. All right, let's take a look at this one all the way around. Oh my goodness, it's just the fibers, the flow, the waves, oh, so good. If you love beachy wave type wigs, I know we have a lot of those out there. There are some unique features on this one though that I will tell you about, but if you just love that style, I love Henry Margu fibers. I think they're some of the most natural, realistic fibers on the market. I love that they're more of a light and wispy type fiber. They mimic a little bit of a finer hair type, and that just gives it such good flow, um, feels so comfortable. I've had a few Henry Margu wigs that I wore and wore and wore early in my wig wearing journey, and the fibers really seem to be very hardy and do last. So I'm a, a real fan of this style. And honestly, if you've never checked out Henry Margu, I really strongly encourage you to do so. One of the challenges with Henry Margu is that there aren't sales on Henry Margu wigs very often. You may find coupon codes available for a lot of other brands, but Henry Margu really only has a, a hand, not even a handful, maybe a couple, two, three sales a year. So you do want to pay attention to when those sales are, but I looked at the price of this one. I'm actually really impressed by the price point. So right now on the Wig Studio One website, as I'm filming this video, this wig is on sale for, I have my computer and I typed it so I wouldn't forget, $232, $232. Now if you're new to the wig wearing journey, you know, $232 sounds like a lot for a wig. But for a high quality synthetic wig with a lace front and monofilament features, that's a really good price. So just imagine if you can snag it on sale what the price will be. So I'm really impressed with the fact that this is not as high of a price point as we're, we're seeing a lot of synthetic wigs today. I would consider this a moderate density piece. It's not light density for sure, but it's not heavy density. It's a really nice density. I would say if you are used to your hair being incredibly thin, you might actually feel a little overwhelmed by this one in the beginning. If you're brand new to wig wearing and you've never had a lot of hair and it's been thinning for a long time, 
Wigs can be challenging in the beginning, and styles like this that have some volume, some permities, and waves can feel like a lot of hair. So I just want you to be prepared. If this looks like dream hair to you and you want to try it, you may need to grow into it. It just sometimes takes time for our brains to get used to seeing us in more hair than we're used to. And I love, love, love that my wig wearing journey has brought me to the point where I can wear a style like this comfortably and I know you can get there too. Now this does, like I said, have a moderate density. It also has permatees. We have a coating of permatees all around this whole cap. It is not super heavy permatees, but it's definitely there and when you put your hands in, you can feel it. It's got that kind of pillowy feeling to it all around here, all the way around the back, all the way down to the nape. And up here on top. So we've got a pretty uh, even, if you will, coating of permatees all throughout this whole cap. If you are someone who does not like permatees, let me just put a plug in for permatees on wavy pieces like this. Sometimes on a piece like this, if it doesn't have permatees, it really falls flat, especially throughout the course of the day. One of the things to think about is what the heat of your head and gravity can do to a wig, especially one with curls and waves. I've had pieces before that didn't really have permatees because in the beginning I couldn't really wear permatees. I was overwhelmed by even the lowest density, flattest wigs. I know some of you can relate. But I would notice when I would wear those styles to work and I'd go to the bathroom halfway through the day and look in the mirror, it just looked, I kind of looked like a drowned rat. I mean, it was just like it had become really flat, a little bit draggled, and I would constantly find myself doing this. If you have a wig with a little bit of permatease, you won't have as much of, a, of that type of a problem. So permatease can really enhance a style with curl and waves. And I really want you to think about how if you ever want to wear styles like that, you might relax your moratorium on per permatease just a little bit. Let's talk about the cap features. So this has a lace front and Henry Margot does a fabulous job with their lace front. So let's take a look. I lift it so you can see it and then you can see it melt. They're so good at this. So your lace front goes all the way down to here on both sides. And it looks amazing. I mean, this one has some rooting and they still did such an amazing job with that hairline. And what I really love about how they do their lace fronts is you can't see that transition. So if you wanted to take this and you wanted to maybe clip up the whole front, I love to do that with wavy pieces and then sort of play up the waves. You can, and they just do such a good job of obscuring where that lace front ends. Sometimes you'll get a wig with a lace front like this, and you have to be careful not to get too close to that end because they don't do a good job of obscuring it. They did a fabulous job. One more look. It's so good. Now, this also has a mono part, and it's a center mono part. Right there is your parting space. They do a really good job with that as well, but I have a feeling some of you are about to click off this video because you don't like center parts. I want to tell you a little bit about what you can do with this one because of how they did this lace front here. So let's take a look at the cap and then I'll show that to you. So we've got the lace front that goes basically temple to temple, your center monofilament, and there's a big wide space here before it narrows into that monofilament. That's actually going to give you some parting flexibility. Unless you prefer a very deep side part, if you can handle a slightly off center side part, you can get that with this. You've got nice soft ear tabs with bendable stays, you have an extended nape, Velcro adjusters, Henry Margot caps are awesome. They do really, they're, they're comfortable. They just do a great job with them. So let's talk about what I was referring to with the parting space. So right now, I have it parted exactly where it came parted. This is out of the box. You guys, I just took this out of the box about two hours ago, shook it out and put it on so that I could play with it, get to know it, so that I could talk about it with all of you guys. I have done nothing to this wig. I have... I, I combed it a little bit. I just basically did this and I shook it out. That is all I've done. I have not sprayed this with water. I have not hung it upside down. I've done no scrunching. I've done nothing. It looks so perfect out of the box. I am so very impressed with that. But what you can do is you can take this because look at all that parting space. Now I shouldn't have worn, hold on here for a second. I shouldn't have worn a, a, a completely closed wig grip 
because then it makes it look like you can't really see that parting space. So let me take that off. Just a tip for you guys, they do sell wig grips with lace at, at the parting space. Um, I just couldn't find mine when I wanted to film this video, so I grabbed the one that I could find. But sometimes when you wear a solid wig grip like that, it can create a line where that wig grip is through the monofilament. So just either go without a wig grip, sometimes it's far enough back, it doesn't really matter, or get a wig grip that has a nice lace on the parting space so then you don't see the wig grip. But anyway, so we've got the parting space here. This is how it came parted. And now you can take this and you can go a little bit off center because of all that space right up there, you've got some room to kind of go a little bit off center, either to the left or to the right. Now, when you do that, you may have some fibers that are going to be stubborn because they were used to going another direction. That will just take a little bit of training. Sometimes it's just literally a matter of wearing it for a few hours and constantly reminding it where you want it to go. That may be enough to train it. Sometimes you need to spray it with water and maybe even take a hair dryer on low heat, no heat. Be very careful with heat because you can melt these fibers. But you should be able to train it if you want to take that part a little bit off center. All right, so I put it back where it wanted to be, and I just have to say I'm loving the center part. I never, ever thought I'd say that, but I am finding in some on some styles a center part is so flattering, and I do think these kind of styles with like just a little bit of shorter layers at the front and then all of that wave can be so incredibly flattering. I'm really loving it. It's really cute. All right, now let's talk about the size of this cap. This cap is running big. Henry Margot, in my experience, typically runs average, sometimes a little larger than average. This is running larger than average. So let me just take it off, and I'm going to cinch it in. I always start with the adjusters all the way out because I want to get a sense of kind of the biggest that it might fit. It's so loose on me when it's all the way out. Oh yeah, that is so much better. I wanna show you guys what I did. I cinched these almost all the way in. Look at that. I have a 22 inch circumference, whew. And I've got beautiful hair, as you can see. Um, I have a 22 inch circumference and I've almost got this cinched all the way in. That's a crazy, amount of cinching. I don't normally do that much cinching on an average size cap because my my circumference is average. Oh, so much more comfortable. So what I'm going to say is this is running closer to average large. Um, I, for sure 22 and a half, you're going to be able to wear this. Maybe even 23. It's hard for me to estimate a whole inch bigger than me. That's just a little bit too much more than I'm comfortable with. But you saw how far I cinched it in. This has a ton of stretch. It is one of the most stretchy caps out there, really. Um, it's so stretchy. So we've got a lot of stretch. We've got, uh, I've cinched it all the way in. And I've got quite a bit of extra cap up here. Just all around, this feels like it's running big. It definitely feel felt like it fit me better and was more comfortable with a wig grip on. It's comfortable because it's not tight at all, but it, I do feel like it's not as secure as it could be. So just keep in mind, if you have a petite head, this is running very large. And, yeah, I've got great coverage with it. Now, I love where the ear tabs fall. They fall right kind of in front of and below the top of my ear so that I get really good coverage of my bio hair. Plus, they've got a lot of fibers sewn in over here. So I can wear this. I can tuck this. I can do styling with it. And I'm not going to have to worry about my bio hair showing, which I really appreciate. Now, keep in mind, it's not difficult to make a wefted cap smaller. There are lots of videos out on YouTube showing how to make a wefted cap smaller. I have a whole bunch of them bookmarked in my playlist called Other People's Tips and Tricks. So if you go to my page of my YouTube channel and you'll find the playlist option, you can go look for that playlist. I probably have five videos bookmarked showing how to make a cap smaller. I'm not sure how to make them larger right now, but if you have a petite head and you still want to try it, I think you can. I think you can make it smaller to make it work. All right, everybody, I think I've told you everything. The features, the beautiful wave pattern, the density, the fibers are just wonderful. They feel so realistic. I'm just in love with this wig all around. Let's talk about this color. So we've got 8 slash 27 slash 26.
The eight is a medium brown. It is a beautiful medium brown with strawberry blonde, which is your 27, and gold blonde highlights, which is your 26. I will get outside for you guys. And that's all on a gradient root. That's what the GR stands for in the Henry Margot line. All of the wig lines have their own way of doing color codes, and so when you see a GR on a Henry Margot wig, you know that means it has a gradient root. So it just means it starts off a little bit darker, and then it sort of gets lighter as it goes down. It's so natural. It's not a long root. It's not a stark root. It really does look like a shadow root, which is so perfect. Really beautiful. And so we've got a really kind of golden, some auburn feel to it, like a light auburn. Nice highlights. Let me take it off so that I can... Sometimes if I get out of the frame, you can see the color just a little bit better. It's just dynamic. They did such a good job of diffusing some of that golden blonde in here. So it softens it up. And then there's that beautiful rooting. Not heavy, not stark. And it's not like a stripey highlight. They really sort of blended those colors all throughout so it's very consistently highlighted. It's so pretty. I've never seen this color before, but I might have to say this is going to be one of my favorites. It's right up my alley. All right, everybody, let's get outside and see this beautiful color outside. Once again, thank you to Wig Studio One for sending me this beautiful piece. All right, let's go outside. Hey everyone, we are outside. I've got some afternoon sunlight on this. I'm so limited where I can go now that there's snow on the ground. I'm also limited where I can go to get shade that isn't too shaded. I'm trying to figure out how you'll see the best. Look at this. Oh, that sun is bright. Here, I'm going to walk over this way a little bit. Maybe there's a little shade right over here. All right, everyone, this color is just beautiful. Hope that helped. Thank you.